What makes me me? Hello, my name is Ona Ashley, and my story and my culture really starts and has its foundation with my grandparents. Ona Scott, who was born in 1901, and Edward Ashley, who was born in 1886. These are my dad's mom and dad, my Scotch-Irish, English, and Dutch descent. Notice I didn't say heritage. Grandpa was 15 years older than Grandma. His family came from Kentucky and was planning on going to Colorado Silver Strike, but his mom got sick in Blue Springs, so the family settled in the Kansas City area. It's through the Ashleys I go back to before the American Revolution. As you can see, he was a World War I vet and had a variety of jobs from restaurant owner, dairy stand, sausage stuffer, owned a farm a couple of times, but he was retired my whole life. He could do anything, fix anything, grow anything, loved fishing and bowling, and can play a mean guitar. He was an incredible musician. He even played in some honky-tonks with his brother-in-law. He could pick up any instrument from piano to mouth harp, and he could just play it. But he could not read music. I have his over 100-year-old guitar. He also whittled a great whistle for his grandkids. Grandma was the first owner of Ashley, the youngest of 13 children in a little town in northern Missouri that doesn't exist anymore. Her family tree goes back to England. Her father died before the youngest child was born. He was a Civil War veteran. She was sent to a workhouse to learn a trade and then came to Kansas City on the bus at age 18 to make her way in the world. Grandma married Grandpa and followed him through multiple careers, but she had a career of her own. She became the general manager of a national company, a businesswoman, the only one in her family to make it good. She read the Bible every night, and her two sons and their families were everything to her. She was the starter and the keeper of all Ashley family traditions. She established our family culture. She didn't have any traditions to inherit, so Grandma started them. They are all in existence today. Both Grandma and Grandpa were hard-working pe poor people with no time for traditions except survival and family. When things got financially comfortable, they established traditions for the family. An old-fashioned Protestant work ethic is the start of our culture. We still have the watch Grandpa had to hawk to marry my grandmother. My other set of grandparents were from Holland. I am second generation Dutch. They came to the U.S. legally, and from the paperwork, it seems like sometime between 1950 and 1919, during the heyday of Ellis Island, that they came to a different port. Tina Weiland was born in 1888 in Friesland, Netherlands. Friesland is kind of an other area of Holland, but Mom always said that without Grandma's Fries, we wouldn't have a sense of humor because most Dutch don't have one. She was frail but mighty. She was a Dutch Reformed religion, wore pad silk blouses, and dyed and permed her hair until the day she died. Very individualistic for someone born in the 1880s. Neil Cornelius Voskyland, my grandfather, was born in 1891 in Holland. Grandpa worked in a county farm, and they lived in the back house on the farm when my mom was little. They were very poor also, but he also made it good. He was a horse trader, a used car salesman, a fourplex owner, and a landlord. He was a devoted Catholic who walked to church every day. He loved his vodka, but gave it up for Lent every year. Mom's parents made sure there were no traditions from the old country. They wanted to make sure their children became American and never even let their kids learn or speak Dutch. They tried to leave their traditions and cultures behind so they could be completely American. Both my grandmothers were rebels in their own way. Tina was a rebel in her beliefs and dress, and Ono was way before her time in business. I have strong women who were not afraid to carve their own paths from both sides of the family, but no definite traditions or cultures. One didn't have any, and the other suppressed theirs. Dale and Betty Ashley, my mom and dad. Leonard Dale Ashley. Dad went by Dale most of his life until Medicare. The oldest of two boys, who weren't supposed to exist because Grandma wasn't supposed to have kids, but you know those fa females in the family, and the first Ashley to get a college degree thanks to the Navy in World War II. The epitome of the American dream, a poor boy from Westport to the president of a local international company. Mom, a force of nature, who never graduated from high school, but the smartest person anyone ever met. She was a model, an accountant, a painter, a writer, an antiquer, 
school picture lady, Girl Scout leader, first aid and CPR instructor, the first one to teach the EMTs in Johnson County, a religious teacher, she was preparing for her class the week she died, an all-around Renaissance woman. She was always taking classes from belly dancing to Dutch, Spanish, and Japanese. And don't forget, she was the president's wife, mother, aunt, and grandmother. Because she had no family in the U.S., like aunts and uncles and cousins, she was also starting traditions, especially anything Dutch. Her favorite saying was, God will forgive me much because I have loved much. And she did. She passed away about six years ago, last January, and people came from all over the United States for the funeral and cards and flowers from all over the world. Family traditions and knowing our heritage was very important to her since she didn't have that. And that was all over our house, along with Mexican, her best friends, and Japanese. She was always teaching and always learning. Family was everything to her. Lifelong learning and family is the heart of our culture. My house growing up was filled with traditions and history. Filled with Delft, Dutch paintings, Grandpa's wooden shoes and wooden skates. I had an authentic Dutch girl costume. There were almost antiques, early American, like pie cupboards, butter churns. We had to know the meaning and the importance of everything in the house. These are just a few of the many things that were there. Mom made sure we were surrounded by tradition and culture from both sides of the family and the country. We were also surrounded by cultures that weren't even ours, but we adopted everything. Roy, my husband, is a Boy Scout commissioner, a church volunteer, a rosary and jewelry maker, and a bass guitar player. He was a computer programmer analyst that got laid off years ago and now drives a special needs bus and manages my dad's properties. My kids call him a hippie, but we have been married for almost 24 years and have known each other since we were 13. Me, Ona Ashley, the second one, notice I didn't take my husband's last name. I am the oldest of three girls, the first grandchild, and the oldest of the oldest on the Ashley side. The next and only other Ashley to graduate from college, um, I will be the first one in my entire family to get a master's degree. I was expected to be su successful and have been. In an industry of men, I was one of the first three female hotel general managers in Kansas City, when female general, general managers were unheard of. I am also a daughter, a sister, a wife, mother, ex-Girl Scout leader, church volunteer, ex-school council president, employee, boss, and teacher. Strong, rebels in their own way, women in this family is a definite part of the culture. We try to shape the world around us. Our family take traditions from the Ashley side, the ones that Grandma and Mom established, and the national culture from the Voskylan side. The things that are important in my family, our culture comes down to three things. God, family, which is a lo also a love of music and theater, and education and career. God and religion are very important on both sides. Since we didn't have a set of established cultural traditions, my family created or borrowed traditions and then usually embellished them with their, our own touches. Grandma, Mom, and now me created a lot of them. The Ashley family now feel that a lot of these are set in stone. We do not change or venture far from these traditions. The last part of my culture is lifelong learning. Career, my grandparents, both sides, made it good. They went from poverty to middle class with hard work. My dad was a poor kid in Westport that started working at the age of 12 but attended college and became the president of a company. I went to college to become a teacher, but became one of the first female general managers in the hotel industry in Kansas City. Then went back to teaching when my kids were born, and now I'm the director of the largest chef apprentice program in the United States. None of us got monetarily rich, but we all made it good through hard work and determination. This is definitely a family cultural value. Family, spiritual core, pursuit of knowledge with a healthy curiosity, Tolerance and colorblindness, not settling no matter what the odds, very high expectations with a bit of rebel is my culture. It's a tough legacy and sometimes hard to live up to. We are not rich in traditional culture, but we are very rich in Ashley culture.